All right, we're recording. Let's uh, get started. Hi, everyone. Let me introduce myself. My name is Dan. I'm the co-founder and CEO of TextPlays. Thanks for joining. Um, teachers have a warm place in our hearts. Both uh, Scott, this is my co-founder, and I have uh, teacher parents. So we're always delighted uh, to see teachers that are happy with TextBase and are getting a lot of value from it. And we wanted to create a space uh, that brings together teachers who are TextBase users and the TextBase team so we can help each other get more value from TextBase and also make sure that TextBase meets uh, teachers' needs. So this, you know, it's the beginning of the school year. We wanted to schedule this webinar to as a way to kick off the space, introduce text space to teachers, and start the conversation. Uh, we are joined by uh, Jen Harris and Eli Mikkelsen. I hope I pronounced those correctly. Uh, who are a team of seventh grade language art teachers in Edina, Minnesota. Uh, they've been using text space for several years now to uh, improve their teaching. When we first met them, their enthusiasm for text plays really uh, lifted our spirits, uh, and we wanted to share it with others. So we invited them to present how they use text plays in this webinar, and thankfully they uh, agreed, and we really appreciate it, and thanks for joining, guys. Um, a quick overview of today's agenda. I will give a very quick, I will try to give a very quick overview of text plays just to make sure we're on the same page. What is TextBlaze, how to install it, how to start using it? And then I'll hand it over to Jenny and Eli uh, to give us a demo and an overview of how they use TextBlaze and the value that they're getting from it. We'll then open it up for questions for Jen and Eli, as well as for me about TextBlaze in general. And then through those questions, and if time permits, we might um, kind of introduce some of the more advanced features of TextBase, but that's not the main point of uh, today's uh, session. If, if we present those, the main goal will be just to make sure that you guys are aware that uh, those capabilities exist. All right. With that in mind, let's jump straight to it. Um, TextBase. So what is TextBase? TextBase is a tool. That... TextBase allows you to save templates of text and insert them anywhere with keyboard shortcuts. Let me show you TextBase in action very quickly so we're all on the same page. So with TextBase, if this is a sentence that I find myself typing repetitively, I can go anywhere on the web, type the keyboard shortcut, and it gets replaced with the text. This is what TextBase does. It's very straightforward, uh, and we'll talk a lot more about that. To get started, go to blaze.today, um, and it will look like this, there's a button that says download the extension. TextBase is a Chrome extension. We also have desktop apps, uh, but we'll focus on the extension. This will take you to the Chrome Web Store, and uh, it doesn't show up for me because I'm in guest mode, but you'll see this button that says Add to Chrome. This will install uh, the TextBase Chrome extension for you and will take you to the sign up page. The sign up page looks like this. If you're using Google, you can use the uh, Google sign up. Otherwise, you'll need to provide an email address and a password and just sign up for the first time. If you're using an email and a password, you'll get an email to your inbox asking you to verify your email address, just so we know that the email that you provided is actually your correct email. If you, and this is only true if you're not using Google sign up. Sign up. If, um, you're not sure and you or you haven't received the email, you can always go in your dashboard and you'll get to your dashboard after you sign up. Click at the top right and then click on manage your account. This will show you the email address that you provided, the email address that you used to sign up. 
And if for some reason your email hasn't been verified yet, so you haven't clicked on that link in the email, this a page will have this big orange box that says, please verify your email address. And you can resend the verification email. If you run into any issues verifying your email, uh, please reach out to us. You don't need to verify your email to use TextBase and, and um, get a lot of value from it. Where the email verification becomes important is where you share snippets with others. And we'll, we'll talk about sharing um, sometimes during this webinar. All right, and then lastly, um, we recommend that you pin the text-based Chrome extension icon. What I mean by that, if after you install TextBlaze, uh, your browser may look like this. And so if you click on this puzzle piece, that's the extension icon, you'll see TextBlaze installed here. And then you can click on the little pin next to it, which will make the TextBlaze icon show up at the top. This is useful if you want to search for your snippets and for other uh, accessibility needs that is that then let's talk about just using text base very quickly um how you do you create a text based snippet and how you use it to create a text based snippet click the big plus button um to create a text based snippet click the big plus button and this will create a snippet. A snippet has three components. The name, this is just a description for yourself. The keyboard shortcut, this is what you will type anywhere to trigger the snippet and, re and insert the content of the snippet. We recommend that you either start or end with a special character. You don't have to, but you want to avoid using keyboard shortcuts that you might type without wanting to actually insert the snippet. So starting or ending with a special character like forward slash, dash, semicolon, anything like that can help um, with uh, the keyboard shortcuts. And uh, otherwise, use keyboard shortcuts that are simple to type and easy to remember. And then lastly, this is the content of the snippet. This is what will be typed when you type when you insert the keyboard the keyboard shortcut. So one that I use regularly, And this is it. This is ready to use. And you, now you can go anywhere on the web, type the keyboard shortcut, and it gets replaced with the content. This is text based in a nutshell. Um, and you can start saving a lot of time. And I misspelled question, of course. Um, you can save, start saving a lot of time just eliminating a lot of repetitive typing there are other ways to trigger snippets uh, like the right click menu or you can click on the assistant through the icon and search for your snippet and trigger it from here all right so that is textbase in a nutshell if you've never used textbase before install it it's free forever um, you can use snippets on the free plan. You can have up to 20 snippets that are active, but you can use them as many times as you want. And then we have discounts for uh, educational institutions that we'll, we'll talk about towards the end of the session. I want to hand it over to Jen and Eli to talk about how they use TextBlaze to improve uh, student feedback and save time. Any questions so far? All right, you guys take it away. All right. All right. Hey, everyone. My name is Jenny Harritz. And as Dan mentioned, I teach seventh grade language arts uh, in Edina. And TextBlaze is like totally my passion. So I can't wait to talk to you all about it and show you how we're using it. And I teach with Jen. My name is Eli Michelson. Uh, we collaborate on everything. We uh, really were looking for a tool to help us to give feedback to students and to really make sure that 
Uh, we're saving time as teachers, especially as language arts teachers. We're doing a lot of student writing, grading, uh, and just making sure that we have uh, a way to do that easily and efficiently it was what we were looking for. And Text Blazers helped us uh, so much, saved us so much time over over the years, really. Yeah. So we wanted to show you a few of the key ways that we use it. And now that um, we've been using it for so long, it's really easy to start the school year because so many of our text blazes are already set up and we just go in and refine uh, for each project or unit. Um, one of the things that we appreciated about text blaze right away was our ability to collaborate. So when we sit down to maybe create a new writing assignment, we'll think through what sort of feedback kids will need and I'll create a folder or Eli will and I'll share it with him. And then we are, both have access to those snippets and we can edit them. So just like a Google Doc where you're sharing all your, you know, editing rights, you can do the same thing with text plays, which we have found to be super helpful. And so I've got my text plays up here. You can kind of see some folders that I have active. I've also got a lot of folders for, you know, upcoming assignments that we'll get to later in the year uh, and just a lot of places where I have uh, a lot of snippets and, uh, you know, conventions is one I will use as an English teacher throughout the year. In here, I've got, you know, a lot of different things like, capitalization errors, punctuation, that kind of stuff. And just to see that in action, if I'm on a student document, um, we do a lot of our assignments through Google Docs and through Google slideshows and presentations. Um, but if I just wanted to say here, uh, this is a run on sentence, I've got a snippet for that. I even included a YouTube link here. So if a student's wondering what it means when it says run on sentence, they have a little bit more of a resource there. Um, just to help them out. Um, that one capitalization thing, just do that and you've got your comment. I don't have to type that out every time. I don't have to um, keep on doing it. I just got the snippet and I can do that wherever I might need to do that on any student's assignments. So what I appreciate about this, I, I, this is my 24th year teaching. So when I began teaching, I always collected papers by hand, right? And you kind of develop like a handwriting, like an R slash O, or you know, you do a little underline or a star, but there was no place to give specific feedback. Um, and so TextBlaze has allowed us to get very detailed and specific with our feedback and we're doing way more of it before we get to the summative assessment. So as they're going through the writing process or they're going through whatever formative work we're doing, we're giving them very specific feedback that they can go in and fix before we get to that summative. And it's really been game changing. And in fact, I don't know, Dan, how to check, but uh, the guy who was our administrator of text plays last year told us together we have like over 30,000 snippets that we had done within you know the course of a year and a half or something because we just use it so frequently for emails great book comments yep um, um and it's nice that we can be consistent between the two of us um so that we yeah. know that we're saying the same things to students and giving the same message and i think that helps us to collaborate as a plc as well um at the end of the year, we usually do a big project and uh, students present to us. And so it's, uh, I often use text plays for that too, because I have trouble just writing things down while students are presenting. My handwriting is atrocious anyway. Um, so just to like have that available to me, I can kind of just do some quick snippets. So for example, let's see. Uh, oops. Got that right there. And uh, this this group didn't do very good eye contact, so I can just kind of put that down. Uh, and I can just kind of keep going with some snippets while they're presenting. I can copy that whole thing and like put it in the grade book or give it to students in a digital format uh, somewhere else. Um, that way uh, I'm not too focused on like getting all the comments on the grading sheet. I can kind of just easily do that and stay engaged with the student presentation. Another thing we found, uh, we kind of, last year got a little bit more creative with our writing process uh, in text plays. And so we decided to create an assignment that students had to level up uh, on. So it's kind of just going through the writing process from brainstorming to drafting, uh, outlining, that kind of thing. Um, and so we created a document that looks like this. And when students got it uh, through Schoology, which is our learning management system we use, they just have this. 
And uh, this really forced students to come talk to us, to conference with us about their brainstorming before we had a chance to uh, give them the next level. Um, so this is so cool, you guys. We were so excited to design this because oftentimes when we give an assignment, kids jump right to writing the essay and they miss all that writing process we needed. So we withheld the assignment. We, we just gave them the brainstorm. Once this kid got checked off, Eli is going to type in L2. And there is the second part of the writing process. So now we're going to have them outline their body paragraphs. And to show that they've completed a level, we put a sticker at the top. And so every day we'd say like, your goal is to level up. You should be on level three today. We would put up things, uh, you know, so kids could kind of see where they were at. And of course, kids were all over the place. But for us, they walk up with their computer or I could do a visual search on um, like my Google Drive. I have my Schoology folder. And if I pull up a class and I do it as like the little icons, I could see every kid's progress by just glancing because I could see how many stickers they had. And then I could, I knew like, okay, I have to pull these kids in. We have something called flex time where we can schedule kids in for additional support. And I'd be like, okay, or I need to start class today by talking about these three kids because they're still on level one and they should really be at level three or four. Um, so we were, this was amazing and the kids loved it. Yeah. We teach seventh grade, <laughs> um, but I think in the, the video game, gamified world we live in, this idea of leveling up makes sense to students. Yeah, and so we, you, there's so much you can do with text play that I think we have hardly even scratched the surface of what we can yeah. do creatively with it. Um, but, you know, for anything that you're grading, this is a test that we would give. And I don't know how familiar people are with um, single point criteria rubrics, um, but we usually use these for a lot of our assignments where we have areas for growth and areas of success. Um, so really just thinking about, okay, what did I see from this student? Um, and then going with, okay, your preparation was great. So I've got prep exclamation point. And maybe that can work. Let's see. Press enter and do it. And we, the system we've worked out, we're probably a little too wordy with our snippets. Yeah. Uh, but we do use like an exclamation point for positive feedback. We use the tilde for like, eh, you got some areas to improve. And we use a, a dash um, for negative feedback. So we kind of know like, uh, like if their thesis isn't good, it'd be like THS you know, exclamation point or THS negative, and then they get whatever type of feedback it is. Yep. And then we like, sometimes we just put a check mark in there too, because we don't want to give them tons of specific things. So we just had a check. Let's see. I, don't think that's, I think it's CHK. Well, I don't remember that one, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can do little icons. You can just put anything that you want here uh, really for, your what's going to be inserted with text plays. Um, we've gotten a little bit more advanced, and this is I, I couldn't give you a how to on how to do this right now, but I think uh, one of our assignments we decided to uh, really teach dialogue. Yeah, we teach dialogue, and so I'll just go to that, back to this document. And so, with teaching the dialogue rules, oops, sorry, or even the word choice, like at the end, yeah, do dialogue. Oops, let's see. Let me make a comment. I'll go, I'll just make a comment here. And if I go out to this snippet, it comes up in a separate pop up box where I can say, okay, it looks like this student wasn't using quotation marks. And uh, I can do that. Also, I think they weren't using correct punctuation. And so in my comment there, it will display everything that they need to know just to remind them of the rules that, of course, we already taught them, but here's where we found an error with that specific rule or those specific rules. And there it is. They can kind of view it and see what they need might need to make corrections on. We can conference about that and give them more feedback in person, but that way we're giving as much as we can to them uh, to kind of empower them to make their own writing corrections and take ownership over their own writing. So one last thing about this drop-down menu, um, we have a science fiction story, like a fictional, they write a science fiction story. 
And we use the six traits of writing for that. So ideas, organization, word choice, voice. And we ended up creating, are they on there? Yeah, like can you pick up the voice one? Yeah. Or word see. choice? Oh yeah. So we created, these are the drop down menus. Or maybe we should go back into the document. Yeah. And so what happens is at the end in the rubric, when I get to the voice box, I click in voice and then go ahead and click on that. And I can click like, okay, this is an example of great voice or not. So I have a series of comments I can um, put in things that I usually would say, you know. And then they kind of all get put in there. They're separated by commas. You can kind of clean that up manually a little bit. Um, but again, it's just giving students as much information as we can uh, efficiently and without having to write it all out um, and just lives there in their Google document. We can come back, we can conference about it. We can talk about it later uh, once we're in person. I also do this for email. Mm -hmm. When I get a repeated questions about something from parents or kids, I'll set up a kind of a response. And then, you know, instead of I can do that snippet and I can change in the name. And I think Dan can talk more, but there are some ways where you can like, we have some all school ones over on the side. Mm -hmm. Like if you do like specific or kid talk, even yep. do kid talk, um, you can like plug in a kid's name and then it pastes the whole text in with that kid's name or the teacher's name. So this is the more like advanced, but it's actually been great, especially during the pandemic. They bought text ways for our whole building and then they pushed out these kind of common language things to use with our students for communication. Even there's icons. Those are icons that we use in our assignments, our unit guides. So we're all using the same pictures and icons for just a um, consistency across the board of what we're expecting in our presentations and stuff. So it's, um, it's been excellent. And just to brag a little bit, our school was just named a school of distinction for the American Middle School, AMLE, uh, one of 11 in the nation. And one of the things that they talked about with, that kind of sets our school apart was this common use of language, consistent use of language, where teachers, students, parents, everybody was using kind of the same language book, you know, we were all on the same page. And I think text plays helped with that a lot. And we, this is our workshop week. We're just getting back into the school year this, this week. Yesterday, we met with our language arts department and we were talking about, hey, it'd be nice if we could all share some text plays folders amongst each other. Uh, you know, we all do some similar types of writing. So just to even be consistent, not just among me and Jen for our grade level, vertically. but vertically as well. Um, so I think there's a lot of potential there to really kind of streamline communication, streamline what kind of feedback students are getting so that they're not getting different messages or different wording from different teachers. Um, and yeah, feedback's been a huge thing that we've really emphasized these past few years, and it's really been helpful to, to do that efficiently with text plays. So yeah. I think that's kind of most of what we wanted to show you. I don't I know if so. we want to take some questions now. Yeah, what questions do you have or wonderings? Yeah. And I'll just say thank you very much, guys. This was really, really great. Um, it's very clear that you guys are teachers and know how <laughs> to present uh, content. Any, oh, I see some reactions in the chat. Um, I'll just say we're a pretty small group. So if you have any questions uh, or just want to comment, feel free to go off mute and uh, just speak. I'll say that like we've uh, gotten a lot of great feedback from text plays. It really worked kind of hand in hand mm -hmm. with our school, with uh, some of our leadership over the last couple of years. Um, so that's been great to like get like real personal support on how do we do some more intricate things? How do we really use it? And um, yeah, they've been really responsive. And, and we, I think, oh, go ahead. I just wanted to say that we really like you guys, but <laughs> that's, not, that's not the reason why we, uh, uh, you know, offer these um, services. This is something that we offer to everyone, regardless of their plan, uh, if, if you guys are interested, you can always reach out to us with questions and always happy to jump on the call and do, you know, help you with implementation or training or whatever it takes to help you be as successful as possible using text based. So Jenny, you were saying something. Well, a couple things. One is I 
like it is truly one of my personal missions to tell every teacher I know about this because I, I it's such a time saver and especially English teachers, but I think all teachers in general, we know from the research that the faster students get feedback and the more specific feedback they get, the more successful they're going to be in their learning and their growth. And that's what we wanna see. We wanna see that learning and growth. And so this allows us to be specific without taking so much time for just one kid, because to give all that feedback to one student, you wouldn't have time. We have 170 students mm -hmm. each. So for us to give that type of specific feedback to those and then to their parents who might be looking at their assignments, it's really invaluable. And I think we used the free version at first. And uh, once we like tried it out with one assignment, we were like, we're, we're buying this. And we have a great parent teacher, um, you know, PTO at our building and they bought our first subscription. But as soon as we told our administrators and they saw it, they were like, we have to get this for everybody. Mm -hmm. So. Awesome. Um, it's really great to hear. Let me, um, I'll use this to talk quickly about the different subscriptions for those that are not familiar. So TextBase is free forever. You can stay on the free version and use it as much as you want um, forever. There are some limitations to the free version. The main one that people run uh, up against is the fact that you can only have 20 active snippets, so 20 snippets that you use regularly. You can have more that are disabled and you can switch between the ones that are active and the ones that are inactive. Um, and then some of the more advanced features like adding images and the form fields, the drop, out, drop down menus and, and so on that uh, you saw um, can only be used for a certain amount of times on the free plan. You can still collaborate on shared folders on, on the free plan. The pro plan is for individuals it costs two dollars 99 cents a month uh and it makes all the features available um but it's still for individuals and then the business plan or the team plan costs six dollars 99 a month per user however we have a 50% discount on the business plan for schools and universities. And so the price comes up to be the same as the pro plan. The main benefit of the business plan is that it comes with central billing. So, you know, not everyone has to pay for themselves. There's uh, you know, one credit card or one invoice that pays for everyone. And you can share folders with the entire organization or with sub teams within the organization, the way that Jenny and Eli presented, where you have these default folders that immediately show up to everyone as soon as they are installed text plays and you can align on kind of shared language uh, in, uh, across the school or across departments within the school. So those are the different plans, uh, reach out, I'll say this once, uh, I'll probably mention it again. With any question, um, just reach out to us, support edblaze.today, and you know we'll, we're happy to respond and we're happy to jump on calls and, and further discuss these things. I, uh, If there are no further questions, I want to just give a quick overview of some of the more advanced capabilities of text plays. I will say this, I think I, I heard it from you guys, Jenny and, and Eli, that you prefer using plain snippets because there's no pop-up, you don't need to interact with it, you just type the keyboard shortcuts, it gets replaced with the text. And that's the pure time saver the text play aspires to be. And so a lot of our users, just use simple text replacements or images, emojis, and things like that, but without the bells and whistles, and they get a lot of value, they save a lot of time, they get all the benefits uh, that Jenny and Eli talked about, the improved feedback, the 
a fraction of the time, the ability to align on, on shared um, language. However, text-based can do a lot more. And if you're curious, you like trying uh, new, new things, uh, you like to explore more, text-based can help you automate more um, of, of your typing workflow. So I, I want to give a quick overview of that. What I will say uh, is a few things. One, I am just scratching the surface. Text-based e is really powerful, uh, but I'm I just want to give you a sense of what's possible. The other thing is it can be a little intimidating. And so my main message is if you want text-based to do more for you, but you're not sure where to start, just reach out to us and we will help you get there um don't worry about it we have a lot of resources uh that are available if you prefer exploring and learning by yourself uh, but don't hesitate to reach out those resources are mostly here at the top so we have documentation a lot of guides videos things like that for those of you that prefer learning by yourself we have a pretty active community so if you have a question that you think other teachers will benefit from as well uh, or other users will benefit from, use our community, please. And uh, if if you, you're not comfortable asking the community, just email us at support at blaze.today. Uh, support at blaze.today. And then lastly, we have a, a gallery of examples and we have a category for education. And you can just uh, you know see the different posts that we have here click through them, scroll down, and you'll see examples of snippets. Some of them are plain text. Some of them are a little more sophisticated than that. And you can just copy these to your dashboard, save them, and then um, they show up as a snippet in your dashboard. You can tailor them to your needs and use them or just see the way that they are implement them, implemented and then take um aspiration aspiration from them all right uh those are resources just a few things uh what's available with text base so we talked about kind of plain snippets that you just type the keyboard shortcut and it inserts the text they can include links text base is a full-blown text editor so you can change the font you can add links images as you saw uh and many other things tables and many other things, uh, emojis like I have here. And I type uh, my keyboard shortcut and it inserts the emoji. Now, it can become more sophisticated than that. So for example, and you saw some of uh, Jenny and Eli's more advanced example, but this thing, for example, allows me to write a full um, um, grading using rubric. So I have this table with criteria and the different scale for exceed expectation, meets expectation, uh, the definition of each one of them. And then I can just decide which one is relevant for this specific essay. And what actually gets inserted is just the feedback and the final score, not the table uh, itself. That's just the way the, the this snippet was designed. You can also see that there's there are formulas that do on the fly calculation. So the final score is calculated based on my selections. Those kind of things, the the turning the snippets into smart templates that allow you to capture input in real time and then use that input to decide what the output of the snippet will be um, using placeholders, like form field checkboxes, things like that, and logic. All of that is um, possible in text plays. And so you can move from just inserting text to creating these smart dynamic templates that implement some logic to decide what the content should be. And then the other group of capabilities that exist in TextBlaze is more about 
workflow automation. TextBase can read data from any source, but mostly the page or other pages, and it can use that in the snippet. The other thing that it can do is it can move around the page and simulate keyboard clicks. And so the output of that can be something like this, where you can see I have, you know, this is a simple form, but this can be any, any page. I, I have the student name here at the top. I type the keyboard shortcut here, and you can see that it moved between moved between the text field and filled out some information in both of them. The first one, it automatically read from the page the name of the student. And so one capability that was asked by a teacher who's attending this webinar is the ability to also read data from other tabs and use that in the snippet, not just the tab that I'm currently on. We build that functionality and it's in the process of rolling out to everyone. But if you think about moving data um, from one page to another, you know, on one page you have the student essay and, and their grades, and you need to fill out the form to fill that information in, or you want to take their scoring and use it to summarize their year. All of that is possible as well. I'll stop at that. I'll just mention one thing very quickly. It's a pretty new feature. Give it a try. Uh, let us know what you think. If you're not sure where to start, and um, you want some help, we have this AI write feature. It uses generative AI, of course, you know, you will not be a, a tech company if we were not using generative AI. Uh, but you can actually ask TextBase, hey, you know, create a grading rubric for an English essay for me. Uh, this is just an example. You can give it whatever prompt you want. And chat GPT, will create a snippet for you, but it actually knows how to use text blaze. And so it will include things like form field. It will, it will turn it into a, a dynamic template. Uh, in some instances, if it makes sense, you can follow up and, and tell it, you know, you can either use that snippet and then tailor it to your needs, or you can give it follow-up instructions, uh, you know, like rewrite it in a respectful tone or, or something like that. Um, so give it a try. It can also you can also use it on your existing snippets, changing it from writing into polishing a snippet, and then ask it. You know, here's a feedback um, snippet. Change it to be something else, and it will help you do that. Uh, so this is you know it created a snippet. Let's see what it does. It's actually a a pretty good scoring rubric for an English essay. And then I can insert it. All right. That is the overview that I wanted to give of TextBase. Again, can get a lot of value from it very quickly, just saving you a lot of uh, automating your typing, saving you a lot of time and providing high quality feedback at a fraction of the time and aligning on shared language. If you want to get more value from it uh there's a lot more that it can do for you we have a lot of um, online resources but if you prefer just reach out to us and we're here to help can i mention one more thing dan um in the i don't have our screen up anymore but when you're creating a new snippet on the right hand side i think if you scroll down you have control packs um there's a randomizer one which yeah. uh so another andrew was showing us this is cool you guys because um if you're like giving feedback uh like positive feedback but you don't want to give the same positive feedback to every kid you could plug in like five different things and then just type in your snippet and it'll pick one randomly and i, I mean you could probably talk more about it dan but it's I was like, this has a lot of potential for just adding variety to the type of feedback you're trying to give. Yeah, too often I'm saying, good job, good job, good job. And I, if I want to have more language around that, I think 
Yeah, randomized would be great. Mm -hmm. so. And probably the AI could write those positive comments yeah. for you, and then you can <laughs> throw them into the randomizer. Exactly. You can. Um, man, let's do this. Uh, write five uh, different phrases for uh, good job. I hope that makes sense. Yeah. It's a little too excited about creating. Um... Anyway, let's let's uh, let's use this example while it's typing to talk very quickly about uh, command and command text. So, on the right, when you create a snippet on the right here, those are that's the menu of commands. Commands are the entities you drop into your snippet to make it dynamic. So the text fields, the logic, all of that are commands. Commands are, you know, you add them to your snippet and then when you insert the snippet, they turn into text or an action like clicking a button or a form field like a, a text field or a drop down menu. Uh, at the bottom, so you can explore these commands. At the bottom of them, we have what we call command packs. Those are extensions of the commands, adding more commands. Um, and one, so you can click on them, see what the different command packs are, and then um, activate them. One of them is the randomizer. And uh, once you install it, so at the, at the bottom, you should have a way to activate it for yourself or the entire org if you're part of a business org. And when, once you do that, you can use the commands in the command pack. And so you can, let's actually start a new one. I activated the randomizer so I can create random text and it can be a great job, fantastic, wow. Um, and then it looks like this now, um, I already have G1, G2. Every time that I use, the snippet it will type something else and so you can include it as part of a snippet and kind of randomize part of it and um so you, as as Eli and, and jenny mentioned so you you don't always give the same feedback or you add some um a random component to it okay um lastly my last request is this as i mentioned it's very important for us to build a community of our users and specifically of our teacher users we want to help you we I, I think you know i learned more in this webinar that than i learned from talking to my teammates of course so like it's very important for us to learn from you and we also see an opportunity for, for you to learn from each other. Um, so we want to keep the conversation going. So please use our community and also reach out to us and let us know what else, you know, how else you would like to engage with us and with your other, uh, with other text-based users. Uh, what's the best way uh, that you like to learn more about TextBlaze or, or engage with the rest of the community? And uh, we will continue doing such events to, to encourage that. All right. I saw some comments in the chat. Let me just take a look very quickly, see if there's something to react to. Otherwise, Jen, um, I will reach out to you after this uh, conversation. And, and yes, there are some materials that we can share to help encourage folks, uh, encourage the decision makers to purchase tech Um if, if you need content materials to help uh, promote tech plays or get the decision makers to, to purchase it, reach out to us as well. Support at blaze.today always works. Jenny and Eli, thank you so much again for doing this. This was really great. Um, and thanks, everyone, for joining. I will share a recording of the webinar with everyone. Feel free to share it with your colleagues. And um, I look forward to seeing you in future events. Enjoy the school year. <laughs> thank thanks, you. Sarah. Awesome. <laughs> thanks, everyone. Thanks.
There we go. All right. Oh, bye. See ya. <laughs>